Hi, I'm Allie. And I'm Becky. We are registered dietitians that are passionate about functional approaches to whole body health. In this video, we are talking about five reasons why keto is superior to Ozempic. So this feels like a long time coming because everyone and their mom is on Ozempic. We have covered this topic on the Naturally Nourished podcast in length, but today we're just gonna kind of punch it out for you. And it seems like every single week, I'm seeing more and more individuals getting on these semi-glutide injectable drugs. And where it was once used 14 years ago only for type two diabetics, it's quickly expanded into the weight loss world and now impacting really insignificant amount of weight loss. And we're not talking enough about the significant side effects. Yes, in fact, I saw this advertised at my esthetician's office the other day when I was getting a facial that they were now able to do it with the prescription of a doctor on their staff, and it was available to anyone with a BMI of 23 or greater, which as a reminder, 25 is the cutoff for overweight and obesity doesn't start until 30. So they're offering this injectable drug for healthy weight individuals is what right, I'm hearing. Right. And I was talking to a colleague of mine that's an anesthesiologist and she shared with me that patients are supposed to be NPO or have no food for 24 hours prior to surgery. But now they're having to put a special request in for those on these semi-glutide drugs because even though they haven't eaten for 24 hours, there was too much food sitting in their stomach and there was high risk for aspiration or them choking when they were put under. So now we're even seeing the American Society of Anesthesiologists recommending against the use of these drugs for one week prior to operation. And that's not to mention the black box warning that is on Ozempic for thyroid tumors and thyroid cancer. Yes, a black box warning is quite severe. It's the most stern warning one can see on a pharmaceutical drug. And just going to the drug manufacturer's page alone and scrolling, we can see a gamut of side effects from pancreatic inflammation, changes in vision, low blood sugar, kidney problems, including kidney failure, serious allergic reaction, and gallbladder problems as well as jaundice. And the list goes on. Okay, so some really concerning side effects. Before we talk about why keto is superior, let's talk about what Ozempic and these other drugs in that class do in terms of their mechanism. Yes, so these are GLP-1 agonists or glucagon-like peptide stimulators, if you will. The pathway that is impacted through this peptide or this injectable drug of semi-glutide is going to impact the pancreas on a cellular level. This is why we can see high risk for pancreatic inflammation. But via the pancreas, it's gonna have an impact on what stimulates blood sugar release and insulin release. And more stimulation of insulin stimulates that the body has been fed and that blood sugar needs to go into the cells. So this is how it can actually support lowering blood sugar levels, but it gives that false mark of satiety based on the insulin release and on delayed gastric emptying. So the body actually has a perception of satiety or less hunger, a feeling of fullness, and this can lead to under eating, which supports the weight loss results. What's concerning is this dysregulates the satiety and feedback of your body's biochemistry and physiology. So you're reliant on this injectable drug to tell you that you're not hungry. And when you try to go off it, not only can we see refractory blood sugar issues based on the pancreatic stimulus shift, but we also see a raging appetite and we could see high risk for weight regain. Okay, so let's now compare Ozempic to keto. Starting with the cost, I think this is a big one. So we're looking at a weekly injectable drug that's costing about 700 on the low end to 1200 on the high end dollars per month versus a lifestyle shift that in theory doesn't need to cost you any extra money once you've invested in maybe some education, changed over a few things in your pantry, and actually keto could even save you money, mm -hmm. right? If you're more naturally satiated, you might practice some intermittent fasting and only eat two meals a day instead of three plus multiple snacks. You might throw out the processed carbohydrate products that are actually quite high dollar and save yourself some money and invest that in high quality protein and fat. Now, if you feel overwhelmed with where to start with a ketogenic diet, you're in the right place because we've already curated for you an entire playlist of weight loss and keto resources for free on our Naturally Nourished YouTube channel. 
If you want to level up a little bit and have some direct guidance for less than $4 a week, you can purchase our 12-week Food as Medicine Ketosis Meal Plan. This ensures that you get high antioxidant, amazing flavor profiles, and start to make dishes that actually help to rewire your metabolism to serve you, leading to sustained weight loss results while reducing inflammation and improving whole body health. If you wanna take it even further and really ensure that you're educated and empowered, you may wanna check out our three-month Food as Medicine Ketosis class. We launched this program semi-annually in the fall and also in the January New Year timestamp. So check down in the notes and stay tuned till the end of this when we'll share a little bit more information. But that program is $3.99. It's 12 hour long classes plus a gamut of resources and that'll empower you for a lifetime. So that's less than half of one month of one of these drugs. So I think that's a significant cost savings. And for sure. And once you've learned the ropes, you wouldn't have to spend that money again versus if you're on one of these drugs, you become dependent and a client of pharma for life. So cost is a very objective measurable shift and I think you'd be happy to save with using food as medicine keto. The second concern that we're looking at of where keto is superior to semi-glutide drugs is in the world of digestion. So when we look at the side effects of these medications, we can see nausea, we can see heartburn, we can see bloating and distension, GI cramping and pain, and a higher risk for gastrointestinal infection. Because as that food sits there, we can get fermentation and unfavorable bacterial overgrowth, which can drive belching and other adverse side effects. On the other end of the spectrum, with our keto program, one of the biggest side effects beyond probably weight loss that we see is actually improved digestive health. Oftentimes we'll layer this ketogenic approach with our Beat the Bloat program on top, and keto is kind of a foundational lever, and we will see less bloating, less distension, improved microbiome, less GI inflammation, less pain and cramping, and more bowel regularity as side effects. Yes, I love how you're using the word side effect in our food is medicine keto as a like favorable synergy versus the harmful side effects that we get from the expensive medication. Uh, going into the third area of focus, we're talking about energy and mood. So when we look at these semi-glutide drugs, we see fatigue listed as a common side effect. And I would argue this is because many people that are taking these drugs, their cells are starving. They're not getting enough nutrient density in their diet and we're not seeing favorable mitochondrial function because they're losing muscle mass. On the other hand of the spectrum, when we're using a ketogenic diet, ketones are actually a high octane fuel source. So they put out less exhaust, if you will, than someone that's using glucose or blood sugar exclusively in their fuel. When you're making ketones, you're using fat as fuel, and that gives better energy for our mitochondria, better energy for our brain with less oxidative stress, or think of less exhaust output in the way that your body burns energy. Yes, in fact, one of the pleasant side effects of keto, if you will, would be that keto high or this increase of energy. And often we see this also translate over to mood improvement, right? More energy equals also feeling happier, more vibrant in our body. With Wegovy, we see depression listed as a side effect. Yes, and what's more, my anti-anxiety diet uses a ketogenic diet as the foundation because when your body is making ketones as fuel, ketone crosses the blood-brain barrier and upregulates GABA, which is a mellower out compound for our body to reduce the fight or flight stress surge. We've seen also multiple psychiatric clinical trials using the ketogenic diet to actually manage mood disorders and improve mental health. So getting that oppositional effect and enhancement versus potential depression and fatigue. Last but maybe most concerning is we just don't know the long-term side effects of these types of medications, especially in the context in which they're being used currently. Yes, these drugs have recently been approved for children ages eight and above, which is wildly concerning. I remember as training for a certified diabetes educator back in 2010 when Victoza hit the market. And so this drug has only been on the market for 14 years of length. And that was again, initially used for type two diabetics that weren't responding well to metformin and insulin therapy alone. Now, as Becky mentioned, we're using this for like 10 pounds of weight loss and just some undesired body composition. 
So we're looking at 14 years of data max with that first drug <laughs> that you mentioned, but really just the past year or two that this has exploded and been used in different populations. So we are the experiment right mm -hmm. now versus keto we've seen literally used as a survival mechanism since the dawn of humanity. Babies in utero are in keto, breastfed babies are in keto. We ideally should be able to switch back and forth from metabolism of ketones and metabolism of glucose just as a mechanism of how our human body functions. Yes, so we are innately wired with the safety mechanisms of ketones as fuel. And what's more is there's clinical data to support sustained weight loss results. Yes, in fact, this study on the ketogenic diet by Verda Health saw a 1.3% reduction of hemoglobin A1C, that's your three month average of your blood sugar, improved insulin resistance markers measured by HOMA IR, and a 12% reduction of body weight over that year. This study here was looking at long-term effects, a two-year window of a ketogenic diet, and they saw improvement on a gamut of cardiometabolic markers. They also saw less medications used for the individuals that were doing the ketogenic diet. So they were reducing their dependency on expensive medications. And that might have something to do with why the ketogenic diet gets poo-pooed by the medical industry or a lot of ads we see maybe giving misinformation about how this powerful tool could impact your health. Yes, which takes us to our last point. These drugs create dependency potentially for life versus freedom through food. Yes, so if you're interested in taking back power of your health and actually getting into thrive versus simply survive mode, check out our 12-week food as medicine ketosis program. We'll be offering one in the middle of August and early in January. See the link below to see the live program opportunities. For just $3.99, there are 12 weekly live classes with Becky and myself where we go between a more formal lecture to a more informal Q&A. We provide you various protocols, so whether you're a breastfeeding mama or whether you're looking for fertility, whether you have an autoimmune condition, we layer in functional medicine with this program so you can be empowered to optimize whole body health. We hope to see you there. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the Naturally Nourished YouTube channel, and drop us a comment below on something that you learned today.